Hello, welcome to my video series of algorithms. This is part 14 of module 1, sorting algorithms. In this video, we will continue discussing the external sorting algorithm. In this video, we will present the replacement selection technique for external sorting. The goal of replacement selection is to reduce the number of data blocks and subsequently reduce the overall running time of external sorting. Recall that the external sorting algorithm begins with loading fixed size data blocks into the memory and sorting them internally. Our previous example assumes that internal memory can hold at most two elements at a time. In this case, the input data is written to the external arrays as size 2 data blocks. Recall the regular k-way merge or polyphase merge. In both cases, the number of data blocks determines the number of merge faces needed. And the number of merge faces determines the number of out of order data accesses, which in turn determines the overall running time. So, reducing the number of data blocks can help to reduce the running time. However, note the number of data blocks is determined by the internal memory size, which is usually a constant. With replacement selection, we can reduce the number of data blocks without additional memory space. To implement replacement selection, we need to use the heap sort algorithm for sorting elements within each data block. Before discussing replacement selection, it is necessary to understand how the heap sort algorithm works. We have presented the heap sort algorithm in part 6 of this module. You can review the material if necessary. Basically, the heap sort algorithm relies on the heap data structure to sort the data, where the data elements are stored in an array that conceptually represents a full binary tree. Note that this array is stored internally in memory. For a min heap, the smallest element must be located at the root. The heap sort algorithm iteratively outputs the root, removes it from the heap, and adjusts the heap. In the context of external sorting, when outputting the root, it is directly written to the corresponding external array. After outputting the root, the corresponding data element is removed from the heap. To adjust the heap after deleting the root, we first move the last data element to the root. In this case, we write 7 in the root. Then, we perform down calculation on the root element resulting in the array shown here. For down population, we iteratively compare the element with its smaller child and swap it with the smaller child if necessary. Note that at this point, the last entry of the internal array becomes available. In this case, we can load in the next input element to fill the vacancy. When we put the new input element into the vacancy, two cases could exist. First. If the new element is larger than or equal to the root element that was just output, the new element should be written after the root element. Therefore, we can simply include this new element in the current data block. On the other hand, if the new element is smaller than the root element that was just output, then we cannot include it in the current data block. This is because the new element should be written before the root element if they are in the same data block. Since the root element has been written, we cannot write them in order without incurring context switches. So, what should we do in the second case? Consider the example again. Recall the root element that was just output was 4, and the next element we load is 2. Since the new element is not a part of the current data block, we can temporarily mark the last entry as unavailable. Conceptually, it is the same as deleting the last node of the tree. It is not hard to see that, after loading some new data elements, the entire array will be full of elements that do not belong to the current data block. At this point, we can terminate the current data block and proceed with writing the next data block by unmasking all the internal array entries. Note that we still need to spend linear time to build a heap from the array. Here is the pseudocode for the replacement selection algorithm. The algorithm contains a main while loop. 
In lines 4 to 7, the algorithm initializes a new data block by clearing the temporary masks, constructing the heap from the elements in the array, and selecting a new output head. In lines 8 to 10, the algorithm outputs the root and loads in the new element. In line 11, if the new element can be included in the current data block, the algorithm performs R percolation on the new element. Otherwise, in line 12, it masks the corresponding entry. So, if the new element can be included in the current data block, we increase the size of the data block and in turn reduce the number of data blocks. Or, if the new element cannot be included in the current data block, we will not waste any effort either. This is because we have stored the data in memory. Together, we know that we can reduce the number of data blocks without using additional memory space. At last, we know that with replacement selection, we won't be able to estimate the number of data blocks exactly, which seems to be required by polyphase merge. Luckily, we do not need to determine the number of data blocks to implement the polyphase merge strategy. The initial distribution of data blocks to the external arrays can also be determined online as we read in the input data elements. We can keep increasing our estimate for the number of merge phases if we cannot fill up the available vacancies for the current merge phase. For example, recall the table that we used in the previous video to record the number of data blocks stored in different merge phases. While loading data from the input tape, we will walk along the table from left to right and try to fill the data block to an available external array. For example, all numbers in the first column add up to 1, meaning that we can fill in one data block. If we have done it, and the input tape is still not exhausted, we know we need one more merge phase. It allows us to look at the second column, where all numbers add up to 5. It means we can fill in four more data blocks. If still not enough, we will go to the third column, which can hold nine data blocks, and so on. You can see that at one point, we'll be able to find a column that can fit in all input data blocks. In summary, we have finished presenting external sorting. We have presented the naive algorithm developed based on merge sort, and three implementation tricks including multi-way merge, polyphase merge, and replacement selection. Know that all these three strategies can be combined into the same algorithmic framework. Specifically, we first use replacement selection to sort the data elements internally. Then, we distribute the data blocks to k external arrays based on the kth order Fibonacci series to facilitate polyphase merge. Finally, we perform the polyphase merge to complete external sorting. Thank you for watching and see you next time.